before we get into today's story, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Most people are familiar with one of cinema's highest grossing film series of all time, Pirates of the Caribbean. Most are also familiar with the franchise's main character and poster child played by Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow. Though the movies are a whimsical representation of the day-to-day -day adventures of a genre of history's most awe-inspiring criminals, a far fewer segment of the population has been made aware of the fact that the character of Captain Jack Sparrow was based on the life of an actual English pirate active in the mid-16th through 17th century around the Mediterranean, whose actual name was Jack Ward. Said to have been born impoverished around 1553, Ward began his life as a shell of the anti-hero he would transform himself into. Frankly, he was a depressed alcoholic who made what little money he could salvage together fishing in southeast England. His future began amidst the popularization of privatized pirating, which was gaining traction as a mostly legal endeavor upon Queen Elizabeth I's issuing of licenses to any person willing to overtake Spanish ships, the enemy country of the English at this time. These private licenses were described to have worked in the following fashion, quote, The Crown received 5% of the loot, and the Lord Admiral's agents took 10%. The rest was divided between the ship's owner and the crew. Though Ward isn't documented to have had any specific success during his career as a privatized pirate on behalf of the English royalty, it is noted that the skills he would later hone in becoming a legend in his field were first adopted at this point in his life. That is, until James VI overtook the throne and banned all forms of private pirating. Adapted to the lifestyle and not wanting to return to his days of fishing, Ward complained to a friend that he missed, quote, the days when they might sing, swear, drink, whore, and kill men as freely as your cake makers do flies. He missed when the whole world was his empire, where he could rob at will. Something about his own musings must have struck a chord within Ward, because shortly after this conversation, he decided to gather a group of about 30 men to capitalize upon an opportunity he had been made aware of. Ward had been told the ship of a Catholic merchant en route from England to France was docked near where he was staying. He and his men stormed the ship that night and sought escape in the English Channel. Ward and his men were now legally distinguished as pirates, as opposed to the privateer label they had while under license in the previous English regime. Unfortunately, the ship had nothing valuable on board, so upon arrival near the Isles of Sicily, Ward and his men seized a second ship. This time, the score was massive. After his first major success as a pirate, John Ward went back to England to regroup. He gathered a large crew of men and headed out to the Mediterranean near trading routes to rob rich merchants in transit. His plan was very successful, and his crew took two profitable ships almost immediately upon arrival. He continued to add men to his crew and make connections with like-minded pirates in the area. Eventually, Ward and his now vast toe of men went to Tunis, where their fortunes would be forever changed. Though the political scene in Tunis was a bit muddled at the time that John Ward arrived, the most powerful man in the region by far was a man by the name of Youthman Day, the leader of the largest legion of soldiers in the area who were known to wreak havoc on any shipping vessels that neared them. It is unlikely that Ward was welcomed to Tunis by Day. However, by this point, his tendency for violence and his vast pseudo-army was enough to get him permission to take over the piracy in Tunis, so long as Day and his men were cut in on the profit. By this time, Ward had earned the nickname Sparrow, the origin of Johnny Depp's character's name and the loose adaptation that would go on to be made about John Ward's life. Ward had developed a reputation for being flamboyant and stylish, and after becoming inquantifiably rich off his pirating operation, he sought to build a mansion to reflect this. His home and land were described as being more fit for a prince than a pirate. Ward's men were fiercely loyal, and his house was staffed with two cooks and a taste tester. Despite his tendency, though, for the finer things in life, that never put a hindrance upon Ward's skill as a pirate, nor his courage as a leader, as was proven in the battle that would define his legacy as a marauder in the capture of the Renero e Sutterina, an estimated 1,500-ton vessel laden with silks, indigo, and cotton, some of the most valuable resources of the time. The crux of this victory lied in the fact that the ship was too large to maneuver itself as Ward and his men attacked, essentially making it a sitting duck for the pirates to bombard. After a three-hour attack, Ward's men began to board their victim ship. The crew of the Renera e Sotterina fought back and are said to have eviscerated the bodies of at least two of Ward's men as they sought entry. At 
At this point, facing a pushback like they hadn't experienced before, Ward's crew began to panic. Whereupon Ward jumped ahead of his men and is stated to have, quote, boarded the ship, subdued her, and chained her men like slaves. Unfortunately, the structural damage done to the Renero A. Sadarina would cause it to crack in a later storm, killing 350 of Ward's men and nearly drowning John Ward himself, who was able to escape on a separate vessel. Unfortunately, this incident and John Ward's survival amidst a tragedy that left many families in Tunis with lost relatives damaged his reputation and put a hindrance upon his ability to continue his pirating operation. He became heavily dependent on Youthman Day for financial support. Potentially, in an effort to integrate with the local population, John Ward and whoever was left of his crew made the decision to convert to Islam. Ward changed his name to Yusuf Reyes, and despite having a wife in England, married for a second time. Despite this new aspect of his life, the man who had previously went by John Ward was noted to have developed into a shell of his former self, converting back to alcoholism, going bald, weak in his presence, and speaking very little. Although his life from that point on was documented fairly limitedly, the legend he acquired during his pirating days grew far beyond his intentions as pamphlets, books, and plays began to develop with Ward as the subject of discussion. One of the more popular rendition of John Ward's life put out at this time was entitled Captain Ward and the Rainbow, in which the King of England sends a ship called the Royal Rainbow after the pirate. Ward escapes capture in the play, and he goes out with the final line of, quote, Go tell the King of England, go tell him this from me. If he reign king of all the land, I will reign king at sea. Living and dying as England's most notorious pirate and arguably the most famous in history, Captain John Ward fought to claim the title and die with the legacy of King of the Sea.